Sure, I'll just I'll just run through what I had uh, yesterday. Um, for breakfast, let's see, I had four eggs. Um, I had two slices of bacon, and the bacon that I get is like uncured, like organic stuff. Uh, the eggs I always try to go cage free, organic. Um, then I'll just take like two huge uh, handfuls of kale and spinach. And uh, I'll just uh, cook up the eggs, throw those on top of the spinach, and throw the bacon in there. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just eat that up. I usually top that with, like, some salsa. So really, I'm trying to eat real food, you know. I'm trying to stay away from that processed stuff as best as possible. So um, that was, that's my morning breakfast. Um, that's usually about two hours before I train. And then I go ahead and hit my training session up. Um, after my training session, I'm having a uh, protein shake, which uh, consists of uh, some protein powder. Um, I got some uh, kale blended in there. I put athletic greens in there. I got like leucine, um, glutamine, a little bit of creatine in there. I blend that up. Drink that down immediately after my um, uh, workout. Then I'm sipping on, I got like this uh, greens mix. It's called like uh, Dr. Brock's, similar to athletic greens, but this stuff, you can sip on it like all day, like just a little bit of it goes a long way. So I'm always sipping on that. Basically what that does is help alkalize my body um, because when you eat a lot of, uh, well, when you train a lot, your body gets pretty acidic um, without getting too too deep into detail with that the more acidic you are you know um the more you'll get sick the more unhealthy you'll be basically you want to alkalize your body so sipping on a greens drink until lunch uh lunch is usually a little bit uh heavier so i got you know some sweet potato uh let's see yesterday i had some uh a can of pumpkin i had um some uh grilled chicken breasts um let's see steamed up some broccoli threw Threw a little bit of uh, salsa on the. I top everything with salsa, <laughs> but uh, had that, and uh, I was at the gym yesterday, so I had another uh, protein shake, um, similar to my post workout shake, um, and then for dinner I had two big pieces of salmon, and I hate fish. I hate fish, so <laughs> salmon is usually covered with like uh, salt free seasoning. I uh, had that mixed up with some uh, – it's like a big frozen bag of vegetables I get at the store, which has like cauliflower, broccoli. Um, gosh, I can't even remember what else is in there. But you pretty much steam that up, throw the fish on there, spice it up with some uh, seasoning. And then I try to keep the uh, carbs a no-go at night. And uh, I, I usually uh, – if I'm taking the carbs out, I'm putting some source of fat on there. So I'll throw like guacamole on there. Um, last night I had uh, goat cheese on there. Like um, that's the only type of uh, dairy I ever get really is like goat cheese or feta cheese. So I threw some goat cheese on there. And then as a snack, I was starving right before I went to bed. And I had a couple huge scoops of uh, coconut uh, butter right oh. before bed so that that was my breakdown yesterday but uh really the rule is is just um gosh i got this from uh sean croxton he always talks about <laughs> jerf just eat real food just eat real food that's all you gotta do oh yeah i love sean croxton his, his website is awesome his, his podcast is awesome um okay so Obviously, another huge component to you staying so lean is, is your strength training and maintaining that amount of muscle mass that you carry all the time. Uh, why don't you give us a snapshot into the kind of the way you do strength training at your gym and with yourself? Um, well, basically, uh, within the last, I would say, eight months, I've really been breaking my training up into two different parts. So my first session of the day will usually be about 30 to 45 minutes, maybe a lot of mobility, um, a lot of warming up. And then the session, that session will be um, either some Olympic lifting, so high power work, um, I'm, or some like plyometric work. So I'm getting the body moving really, really fast. So I'm just kind of prepping the body um, you know, to go. Then I'll hit my strength work, and I'm usually working you know, sets of three, fives, twos, 
Um, I uh, do a lot of every minute on the minute training with uh, lower reps. Uh, like today, I thought I was going to die. Like it's a strength training session, but yet um, I'm really uh, kind of gasping for air towards the end. So I did uh, seven minutes um, every uh, 30 seconds, two reps of about 85% of my front squat. Um, so that that right there has been really working. Um, as far as the training that I'm trying to do, because I'm trying to get strong, but at the same time increase my conditioning at the at the same time. So it's a kind of a real good mix um, with that. But uh, I'll just kind of rotate what I do throughout the week. So today was uh, more front squatting. Um, tomorrow I'll do some heavy pressing in a similar fashion. I just kind of rotate it that way. And then in the evening I'll come back. It's easy for me to do this because obviously I'm always at my gym and I'll just uh, get a session in after my clients or whatever. But I'll get in a short session, uh, 20 minutes tops of conditioning. So I might do intervals or I might do like a, a, a you know, a Metcon, you know, something like that. So I'm getting my conditioning work at the end. I'll, depending on how I'm feeling, if I'm feeling pretty beat up from the strength session, I'll just do some like sled dragging or sled, uh, heavy sled pushing, which is good for conditioning, but at the same time, you're still getting uh, some good strength work in there, and you're just moving around. So uh, I typically I start that off again with some mobility work again, just to get the body loosened up. So that's kind of what my training been has been looking like. And um, with the conditioning, I'm throwing in more of the 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 fun stuff. So like the sandbags, the kettlebells. All uh, you know, tons of body weight stuff. Um, I'll blend in some skill work in there, handstand push-ups, ring work, and just it's really kind of a blend of that. That's what it kind of, it's kind of looking like. So, awesome, awesome. I like that you guys. Fifteen sets of two in seven minutes. That's a sounds like a brutal squat workout. It's easy on paper. It's easy, <laughs> on paper, but. It's- <laughs> that third or fourth minute and you're just like i don't know if i can go i might have to take a minute break but really that's when it you know i got these rubber bands like i said i had to look at that rubber band today and you know if i was to say because i blog about this all time i talk about it in my membership site you know people write it travis you know how are we supposed to get these 30 second uh you know uh every minute on the minute sets in i'm just like you gotta freaking dig in you gotta do it you know, you got to keep your mind focused in. And I, I always got to remember that when I'm doing it myself, because I can't be telling people to do this stuff. And then I turn around and I, you know, I back out myself. I don't even follow my own advice. So it's real important. You know, I got to stick with it. So I guess that's, that's really another motivating factor as far as like my training goes, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, I got to, you know, remember, Hey man, I'm preaching this stuff. I got to be going through it myself too. So, yeah. Well, we place a huge emphasis on like flexibility combined with strength over at Garage Warrior. Um, it sounds like you're really into mobility training and making sure you keep nice and mobile. Why don't you give us some of uh, your favorite mobility kind of drills, if you can just talk us through them, as well as um, kind of uh, what areas you see are, are the biggest weakness in most people. Um, what I've done, uh, just to kind of cut down on time, is uh, I call it the inchworm beast, and basically... Um, it's just a big kind of mobility movement. So you're starting off in an inchworm. So you go ahead and walk yourself out. And then as you inch yourself up, you walk yourself all the way into like a sumo squat position. So then you get down in that position and you really loosen up the low back, the hips. And then what I do is like a pop-up in that position. So I'll do like three or four pop-ups, just kind of really loosen up that lower back. Because that's been a huge issue for me as far as mobility goes is just my low back I know my hamstrings are tight just from being a sprinter and, uh, you know, so I'll hit that a couple of times. And then what I do is I go out into a really deep lunge and I'll hit a deep lunge, really try to hammer out my hips a little bit. And then I'll pop up. If you can kind of imagine this in your head. So you're in a deep lunge position, you kind of straighten out your front leg. So you get a little bit of, uh, you know, hamstring mobility in there. And, uh, typically I'm only holding these positions for about, you know, two, three seconds, and then kind of easing back into the movement. So I'll hit that on both sides, and then I'll inchworm back up, and then I'll basically just go right through that. But um, as far as mobility work goes, I'm doing a lot of stuff that I've learned from uh, Kelly Starrett. 
and uh, kind of like what he does with the band. So it's um, can't remember what he calls it, but you take like your basic hip flexor stretch, and uh, you throw a band around your hip. You hit your hip flexor stretch, but then you got this band tension pulling back on that joint. And so it's even helping you increase that range of motion a little bit more. And I always try to hammer those out. Um, a lot of uh, wall sits. I'll sit in a deep squat position, you know, for two, three minutes at a time. Because, um, I, like I said, uh, my low back and my hamstrings were like a problem issue for me. And so that's that's what I really focus on. But there's three main movements that I have all my clients do that are mandatory, and uh, that's, a, that's a sumo sit. People got to sit in a sumo stance for two to three minutes, mandatory after every workout. Um, after that, we do uh, that kind of uh, lunge stretch that I was talking about. So they'll take a huge lunge uh, step outside. They'll sit in that lunge position, and they'll push that knee out. And they'll hold their front foot flat on the ground. So it's working a little bit of ankle mobility, but it's it's also working kind of hip mobility as well because, you know, people sitting at a desk all day, their their hip flexors get super tight, lower back, hips, all that stuff. And then the last one is a pigeon, the pigeon stretch. You know what I'm talking about with the pigeon? Yeah, yeah, where you, you can bring your leg across the chest. 